Hi, I'm Allison from Move Smart Movement and Boomerang Pilates. And today I wanted to talk about the not enough syndrome. Uh, whether you're a movement teacher or any other person who produces anything really in the world, are you the kind of person who's always feeling like you haven't given quite enough? You haven't given enough detail. You haven't given enough citations. You haven't given enough new, brand new content. Um, and what does that do to your capacity to move forward? Um, this is not uncommon. I am totally I fall into the not enough trap pretty often. And it's not really helpful. It stops us from moving forward. It stops us from creating our best and allowing our best work to come out. And it, 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 it devalues what we do. So think about how you feel about the word enough. When you feel, when you hear that word, do you go, yeah, well, whatever, like that's just it. Or do you feel like, yeah, that's enough. Enough is, enough is actually defined as being enough. But lots of us have this sense that doing enough isn't really, that's not really cutting it. So let's take a look at some of the kind of personality types um, that can end up in the not enough syndrome, the not enough trap. So you get your perfectionists. I'm a recovering perfectionist for sure. And I can get stuck with not feeling like my work is perfect. And if it's not perfect, I shouldn't let it out there because somebody might notice that it's not good enough. And really, it's incredibly helpful to think less about having to create this whole entire perfect roadmap and think about how great it is to get something into the hands of the people who want to enjoy your work. Um, there's a great phrase, perfection is the enemy of done. Trying to make something perfect is, is a recipe for never getting it out there. So practice the idea that you're, you're not trying to perfect anything. You're trying to make it good enough to be interesting, to be rewarding, to be educational, and that it doesn't have to be perfect. And that's a big task to undertake for those of us who tend in that perfectionist direction. So be gentle with yourself. Start with something small and see how that, how that goes. People who battle with imposter syndrome often feel like their work isn't good enough or that it isn't and there isn't enough of it. Uh, that feeling that um, everybody else knows more than I do. I don't really belong in this in this world. And particularly with online stuff, we we can see so many people who are producing amazing, interesting, inspiring work. It can be hard to feel like we belong there too. We bring enough to the table. To, to be part of that conversation. And so that leads us to undervalue our work. It leads us to not feel confident about our work and to feel like our work is not good enough. So if one of the things that's stopping you is a sense that you don't belong in the, in the forum where you work, where you post, whether you're a movement teacher or any other productive person, it can be really helpful to look at the value of what you offer and not look at it in comparison to other people. Comparing to other people is really, it's a slippery slope because you can always find someone who's got more experience or who's worked with more famous people or I don't know, whatever your metric is for not being an imposter. And to instead realize that the people that you're working with, working to help, you know more than they do and they don't need you to know everything. They just want you to help them with their one thing. You don't have to be an imposter when you don't know everything in the world. Nobody knows everything in the world. You just need to be able to help one thing. You just need to be able to educate one thing and, that, and, and feel really good about that and make a connection and a relationship with the people that you are offering your work to. Critical thinking is a fantastic and important skill. And the shadow side to it is that you can end up being so thoughtful, critically thoughtful about all the possible elements and components of your class or your course or your series or your blog or your email or your project or whatever it is that you're working on, that you get stuck in this kind of endless circle of critically thinking about something to the point where you can't see the positive anymore and it feels like it's not enough. So if you find you're in that trap of 
continuously looking at your work and, and it's gone past a reasonable amount of time and a reasonable number of times to look through at what you're offering and you find that you're getting into kind of a nitpicking cycle where you just keep going and fixing one more thing and adding one more thing, remember that part of critical thinking is seeing the good and the positive and the value in your work and letting it go and letting it get out there. Um, another group of people who struggle with the not enough syndrome are people pleasers. Uh, another group that I tend to fall into pretty strongly. You want to please everybody. You want to answer every question. You want to anticipate every possible need for a modification or a variation in a movement or an exercise. You want to make sure that everybody likes the work that you haven't said or done anything that could not be helpful to somebody that everybody has had their issue sorted and solved. That's a very big thing to take on and can't really be done. So don't worry about pleasing everybody. Talk to the person who wants to know about this one thing that you're addressing. And that's one of the strategies for overcoming the not enough syndrome for anybody of any kind of personality type or whatever kind of stopping trap you're in is to break things down into smaller components and just deal with one thing and do that one thing enough instead of getting stuck in this idea that enough means you have to have done everything. I've just recently been working with some people and we, we work quite specifically on taking big project ideas and drilling down into each individual component step. What is the least thing that you need to do to get that step done and out the door? And so that's a really great strategy. Take a look at the things that you feel like you're not doing enough of and break them down into little tiny achievable components. And then you get less, less stuck in, in the hugeness of what needs to be done and trying to do and overdo and overproduce on a whole bunch of stuff. And then it's easier to see, oh, I just needed to do this one thing and that's enough. And then you get that out the door and you move on to the next step. I really love um, the story about Goldilocks and the three bears in the sense of exploring what's just right. And I think for those of us who tend into that not enough mindset, we really want the too much. We want the too hot porridge. We, 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 get, we fall into a trap of thinking that more is better. More has got to be better. But you know what? Goldilocks was not happy with the porridge that was too hot or the bed that was too soft, or the chair that was too high. She really wanted the one that was just right. And Baby Bear and all of Baby Bear's stuff tended to be smaller. It's less overwhelming when we're not flooding our clients and our students with so much information that they can't really absorb it and bring it in and break it into meaningful parts for themselves. So that's a can be a really useful image to hold in the back of your brain as you're working on your stuff. Am I being too big, too Papa Bear? Can I bring it back in and make it more Baby Bear so that Goldilocks, my client Goldilocks, is really happy with what she's got and how she feels and how what you've given matches the need of the client and the student. And then your exercise is to break things down into little tiny components and do just enough of each one. And so that way your project is done, you feel accomplished, and you've practiced the sense of enough. Got questions, comments? Shoot them in down below. I love answering questions and comments, and we'll talk more next time.